Yes, right there. We only have time for one or two more. What impresses me is, is that very little of what we all want to accomplish be accomplished without building support at the base. And very little opportunity, very little effort is being spent by the national organizations to do just that. We, to solve this problem, is going to require the kind of effort that the civil rights movement had, the women's movement had, the gay movement had, across the country, organizing in order to be able to uh, get this across. The common folk, according to uh, our various uh, surveys, are 85% with us on this question. But we have not found out a way to organize them and to educate them at the local level so that they can come into the election and force change. We cannot force change from Washington. It has to be from the base. Well, but I also think it's relevant, I, I, mean, I agree with you, but I also think it's relevant that we don't have any political leaders who are able, who have been able to connect with people on these issues. Um, and I mean really, you know, connect. And my principal uh, a sense of the challenge there is to connect with both the middle class and the poor, who have much more in common, especially now because the middle class is increasingly becoming poor. And you know, programs like uh, the food stamp program are a middle class program. And the occupant of the White House got there because he was able to convince the middle class that the biggest threat they had was from uh, you know, poor immigrants, not from uh, the opposite. So I think that's a big part of it. And, and you know, leaders have to be willing to talk about uh, these issues and to put their money where their mouths are, like you know, to walk the talk of campaign finance reform, or walk the talk of of uh, you know uh, Wall Street reform and everything else. Time for one more, right there. To stand up in the hopes that it's me. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that when you touch on the grassroots stuff, it's really essential. You can have campaign finance reform, but if it doesn't get down to people who need to vote, who aren't voting, and I guess I have a question related to linking groups. Uh, how do you use the political parties to move this agenda instead of just each of our small individual brilliant, I, I had one, brilliant, small efforts, how do we link it together? It's happening in the, the movement on the streets. I'm a, now a precinct captain in Northern Virginia, and it's fun. So it's happening. Everybody's working on the ground together. So I just really encourage. So let you take a shot at that. Can I just hop in with a comment on recent polling done by, and there are others in the room who can probably speak more knowledgeably about this, but Open the Government conducted polling uh, focus groups in Pittsburgh and in the South. And uh, what they found is people very much want accountability. They do not like the word oversight, and they certainly don't want any mention of parties. Once you mention a party, it is polarized that you know, it, uh, you've lost any possibility of kind of reaching people. They've already made up their mind. Similarly with Trump, don't mention Trump because that closes minds instantly. So I think you're all, you're all right. Uh, Mike Peabody is right. We need, uh, we need the grassroots, but there is no cavalry who's coming to rescue us. We all are the cavalry. So we need to engage people, I think, in very basic ways, kind of get back to basics. Nobody's doing a better job than Trump to mobilize people for and against Trump uh, to engage with their uh, political system. Dennis, anything to add? Well, the only thing I'd say is I, 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 you're absolutely right. I mean, ultimately, it's going to be voters voting in numbers. You know, people say, well, the NRA is powerful because of money. The NRA is really powerful because of votes in key districts that they mobilize, election in and election out, and that's necessary and important.
But there's also a space. I mean, we end up, we're more, we're in the trenches here fighting substantively at the agencies where almost nobody can even spell SEC, never mind know it stands for the Securities and Exchange Commission, but it dramatically impacts um, the livelihoods and prosperity of millions of Americans, uh, as well as the health and safety of the financial system and whether or not the financial system works to serve Main Street or is merely a bonus-driven system to enrich already rich people. And so I think there should be a combination of both, and you can't do one or the other. It's almost like a false choice to say, you must do one or the other. Frankly, you've got to do both. But at the end of the day, um, you have to have votes. People have to get activated, and people have to vote their principles. And it gets back to ultimately making the case for the common good. I mean, the financial system in Wall Street is meant to serve and facilitate the common good in broad-based prosperity, not merely in rich, already rich financiers. And that's a case that can be made. That's not necessarily going to get, you know, a dozen precinct captains working. And so you need a combination of them both, both fighting in the policymaking process. I think of it as kind of until the restoration happens or whatever, whatever that's supposed to be, so that the land is not laid to waste before they come, before the restoration happens. Uh, so I, Nick, I think that, word. yeah. So uh, I think that what we've got to do is put a is put a big deal together that has enough bipartisan support that we can make it a defining issue of the 2020 cycle. The easiest way to get the public engaged in this is through the ballot box. It's through leaders. It's through the electoral process. Um, we don't collectively have enough money to run a hundred million dollar grassroots campaign. You know, none of us combined could ever imagine what that's like. So instead, we kind of have to put inject something at the top, get a try to find some leaders who can back it, Republican and Democrat, and then make sure that it is an issue, a defining issue, and a defining part of the conversation in 2020. So that coming out of 2020, one of the top three, preferably if not top five, issues is fixing the broken system and beginning to restore our democracy. That's, it's a little bit more of an elite play, just out of a sheer recognition of how long it would take for us to assemble the money to do a total grassroots play. But I think the grassroots can come into it um, as long as it's a, 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 a alive within the context of 2020. Um, but I will, I will close simply by saying that when Steve asked us about our budgets, the other thing, there aren't any major donors in the room here, but there are a lot of people who work at the groups that you know do the work. Um, it's all of our faults that we're underfunded, okay? Because unless we're capable of producing a vision and a strategy that is compelling to capture the imaginations of the donors, and unless we are capable of laying out how much that strategy would cost and what we're capable of accomplishing with a surge in resources, then they're not all gonna suddenly come along and parachute down on our front lawns and say, hey, I've got $20 million, what would you like to do with it? If there's a chicken egg thing here. So I think that if we, when we talk about needing to go big, and we do, we first have to get our own kind of ducks in a row here um, and begin communicating that compellingly to the donor class. With that as our final word, I'd like to thank you guys for having me and thank you all for coming. And by the book, by the book.